Okay, uh, I gave my students this list of uh, Quartz Composer exercises just to do while I was uh, going around talking to them about their project ideas. So um, this is for for them to see the solutions maybe and also just so you can see, um, so you can try this yourself I guess. And uh, so here's, here's the first page and uh, well maybe I'll just post a link to it in the uh, comments underneath. Uh, or in the description. So I'll try and go through these as quickly as possible and uh, and most of them are geared toward interaction with the keyboard just because that's what our project in the class relates to. So um, let me just start. Make an image appear on, the, on a billboard while the up key is being pressed. So uh, all I need is my billboard and I need an image which I will just grab this one, connect it to uh, the image port. Now I've got this um, showing up. If I wanted it to be the whole width of the screen, I'd make the units two for the width, but that does cut it off, so uh, maybe I'll keep it at one. And then how do I get it to show up only sometimes? Well, we can use true and false here uh, at enabled to make that happen. And I can simply add the uh, keyboard, what did I ask? When the up, e up key is pressed. So if I connect that to enable, all of a sudden uh, the up key causes it to show up. Okay. Number two, make it stay on the screen until the down key is pressed. So for this, we need uh, probably the sample and hold patch. And uh, I will, I'll show you how to connect this. You have to monkey around a bit with sample and hold to really get the hang of it. But basically whatever value is uh, here on the value port will be passed through the other side if sampling is uh, brought high, or uh, sorry, uh, that's electronics talk. It's If it becomes true, then uh, whatever value is here gets passed out the other end. And uh, so by clicking, by connecting both of these together, hitting the up arrow causes uh, it to sample the value here, which in both, both of these cases would be true while I'm holding down the button. So this actually uh, should work basically it, if I hit the up arrow, it stays there. So now the question is, how can I get it to do the other half of what I asked, which is uh, stay on the screen until the down key is pressed. So for that, it's pretty easy. We just use the reset signal. So now down, up, down, up. Okay, uh, what's next? Make an image on a billboard start to rotate when the cue, uh, key is pressed. So um, for this, maybe I'll use... Uh, a swirl because it makes more sense for a spinning image. There it is. How can I get it to start? Oh, sorry, uh, start rotating when the Q key is pressed. So, uh, first of all, we need the keyboard back, and I can uh, enter into. Uh, and I'm just hitting Command One and Command Two to get to uh, the patch inspector and the settings panel. So I do that a lot uh, rather than pressing the buttons up here and the um, selection here. So I'm just gonna remove everything except for the cue, because that's the only one I'm interested in. And um, I want this to start rotating. So here's rotation. And we know that something like, uh, from my movement tutorial uh, on Quartz Composer, you can use anything, uh, wave generator, interpolation patch, integrator, or uh, timeline. Those are ways to, to get a, a smoothly uh, a smooth stream of numbers that will um, allow this rotation to change uh, smoothly frame to frame. So I'm just going to use, inter uh, I'll use interpolation. And what I'll do is say it should start at zero degrees, it should end at 360 degrees. Uh, that takes five seconds and it'll keep looping. So if I just connect that with rotation, I should see some uh, rotation. And um, Wondering what it looks like the other way. If I go from 360 to zero. Well, I don't know if there's any difference. Anyway, uh, I want it to start on, start rotating only when I hit the Q key. So the way this works is if you um, press stop and run, it starts pumping out numbers immediately as soon as you hit run. The only way to change that is by right clicking, choosing time base external, and you can give it a new time to, to uh, work off of. Um, this works with all of these uh, patches that I just described. So what we want here is to feed it a stopwatch, maybe, and um, that can become the new time. So it actually thinks that this is the, um, the, uh, the patch time. And patch time, of course, is like, whoa, patch time is uh, whatever, whatever the time is since you hit the start button. 
So here I'll say it should start when you hit uh, the Q key. So let's try this again. If I stop and run, it's not going. And then when I hit the Q key, it starts running. If I wanted to do um, a little bit more, I can uh, add another key here, maybe the R key. And I can use stop here. So now hitting R stops it, Q starts it. it starts in the same place. Maybe I want it to start from the beginning. Uh, so that R, now when I press R, it in addition to stopping, uh, resets to the beginning of time, which for uh, interpolation means to start that um, linear uh, progression from 0 to 360 back at 0 again. Okay, that's that. Now, um, make it show a sprite with an image on it. Make sure the image doesn't appear stretched or squashed. So there are a couple ways to do this. Um, I think, first of all, we can get rid of all this stuff. And I'll just use this. So I'll make a sprite. And uh, maybe I'll just move it using this tool here. And I say it'll start there, but actually I want the width to be like 0.4 and the height to be 0.4. So right away, this will be a problem because the, the width and the height are the same. If I choose, um, if I choose this as my image, then it's, it's stretched because the image itself is not square. So how do I get the, um, the width and height there? A couple ways to do it. One seems like the easier way uh, if you get the image dimensions using the image dimensions patch. Connect the image there and then use that as the width and height. But this image happens to be huge. So um, maybe at this point the easiest thing to do is instead use scaled image dimensions. So I will take my image again I will use the width and the height, but the scale, I'll just, if I say one, it'll be full scale. If I change that to like 0.4, then it becomes smaller. So that's, this is one way to do it. But you're kind of fudging it. You know, if you want it to be a specific size, what number do I put here for scale? Maybe you can figure it out, but um, I think that uh, this isn't the ideal way to do it. A way that you have more control is to uh, forget this and instead use um, use that image dimensions patch to get information about the image. And uh, the way this works is basically, um, I think what we, what we probably want is to have a, a width of a specific size. Let's say, let's say that's, the, let's say we want point, point 0.5. That's the width we want. Now we need to figure out the height so that it's not stretched. Uh, right now the height is just anything. Let's say it was one. It's stretched that way. It depends on which way it's stretched, but uh, I can what I can do is I can use right click and choose inputs insert input splitter. This will uh, rip off that width. So now I can use it in two places. That's the reason why I'm doing that. And what I'll do is um, add a math patch. And the, to find out the height, I should be able to take the width and I think probably multiply it times the aspect ratio. I'm not sure if I have that right. No? So maybe I need to divide. There we go. Width divided by the aspect ratio gives me the proper height. What is that number? Don't care, but it's 0.375 for this image. So this is probably the best way to do this. Okay, what's next? Introduce a counter that increments whenever a uh, plus key is pressed. Um, connect its input to the Z position of your sprite so the sprite moves farther away with every press of the plus key. So let's keep this same setup here and just change its uh, Z position based on, um, based on pressing the Q key. The plus key, sorry. So I'm just going to get rid of all these and add one that's the plus sign. And um, it, I, I asked for a counter, so let's just use a counter. We, should, we know that's probably what we need. And I can increase uh, the signal every time I press the key, and now this counter should go up every time I press the plus key. If I use that for Z position, however, um, we'll see that it's getting bigger. can't even tell here because it's, uh, let's move this to the middle. If I hit plus, it's getting bigger by one every time. So first of all, one is probably too big of an increment. And second of all, we need it to recede into the back, into the uh, negative uh, Z. 
So uh, the easiest way to do that is to use the math patch and uh, to make it smaller I could multiply it times maybe 0.01 that would make it smaller but that doesn't solve the problem of it going forward in space so maybe instead I multiply it times negative 0.01 and so now hitting the plus sign makes it recede further into space too small I think there it goes okay that's that what else play a movie on a billboard pretty easy there's the billboard and I have a movie over here somewhere probably let's grab this that's it it's uh, it's playing a movie so that's that's pretty easy um, yes it's playing a movie and of course the width is wrong but um, now we've got it filling the whole screen horizontally the next one is make the movie start playing whenever the space bar is pressed use a stopwatch and use it to supply an external time base so this is actually the same problem we had before um, and this shows that we can use an external time base for something like a movie as well and we'll use a stopwatch. This is pretty much the same uh, problem as before. And I'm asking you to press this spacebar to get it going. So let's do that. Keyboard, and then here in the settings, we'll get rid of all these other ones and put a space there. That will become my start signal. So I, if I stop this and restart it, it doesn't go until I hit the space bar. I hit the space bar again, it restarts. And I could connect something to the stop signal and that would um, stop it. Okay. Use a multiplexer patch to help make a timed slide sh slideshow of images. Once you've got it working, make it cycle continuously. So let's start over here. Well, we can keep the go board, I guess. And let's take a few images, four of them, and add a multiplexer. Don't have enough source ports here for all four of these movies, so I will go into the settings and bump it up to four. And also I know there are gonna be images that I'm cycling through, so I should choose the type of input. You don't have to, but it works more efficiently if you choose the right one. So we'll do it. Okay, so the way this works is it's kind of like a, a selector. You um, tell it which of the sources you want, and that's the one that will come through on the output. So this is, right now the source is zero, but if I uh, change it, you'll see it cycles through the images. Okay, so now I want it to cycle automatically. Wasn't that the problem here? Let's see. Um, how, uh, time slideshow of images. So how can we get a timer? Well, we know integrator gives us a bunch of numbers in a stream, and if I put a one here, it'll be one number every second. The only problem is that it's a really fine-grained decimal number, and what I'm interested in is an index, which is a whole number. This is putting out a number, which could be 5.237. So uh, I will just round that number as it comes out. And I'll use floor. And so now we should see that it's cycling through one per second. Maybe that's too slow, so I could do, uh, well, okay. So it's gone through all the numbers, and now if we look at these numbers, they're too high. So the next question is, it will go through uh, once, and I, I did have this right. I want 10 here to make it go faster but um, it just goes through really quickly and then at this point the number is way higher than three which is our maximum so one way that we can make it cycle around a very easy way is to use the math patch and you might have to look this up if you've never heard of it but we have plus minus 
uh, multiply, divide, and modulus, which is the remainder. So if you divide um, whatever this number is by 4, the remainder is going to be between 0 and 3. So what you'll end up with is 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. That's what we need. Okay, and the last one is make a macro that twirls a letter. The macro should have two inputs in the end, speed and letter. So let's just get rid of all this and start forgetting, the, let's forget the macro and just try and uh, get a letter to spin. So I will use um, image with string. I'll put a letter here and maybe I'll also change the font. Don't know what I'm looking for. Maybe Cartier. Bold. And um, I'll probably want to change the size. Let me put this on a billboard. I could put it on a sprite as well. There's no, no reason to do one over the other. Let's see what that looks like. Let's make the background black. There we go. And um, so, you know, the easiest thing I think, now we'd have to figure out the width and height and billboard only gives us a width, so maybe a sprite is better here. And most people just use sprites all the time. A billboard um, becomes more of a headache sometimes. So there's the image, there's the width, there's the height. So now we've got it at the right ratio. And I just want it to spin around. So you can use integrator for that, just a number that's continually going up and I'll make it go up. Uh, five numbers every second and I'll use that on Z rotation so there we go it's still pretty slow because we're dealing with degrees maybe I'll do a hundred nice okay so what I want to do is just highlight all of this stuff and I can create macro and now I've got a macro patch that uh, contains all that stuff so here where it says I'm in the root macro patch, that's kind of like the base of my composition. If I double click on it, now I'm inside the macro patch. It's a terrible name, so maybe I'll rename it right away. I'll call it uh, Letter Spinner. And so I've got my own macro patch that does this. Uh, I'd like to also, according to the instructions, have two inputs on the macro, speed and letter. So if I go inside the macro, I can uh, add those as uh, inputs. If I right click on uh, image with string and publish that string, I'll just, I could leave it as string or I could rename it, I'll call it letter. And uh, I also need the speed to come out, which is this number. Uh, changing that number makes it go faster or slower. So I will also publish value and I think speed is a better name for it. So you see the green dots and if I look up at the top now they're actually uh, here as letter and speed. So if I change it to an A, changes it and if I change the speed and actually a really nice thing is if I go to the inspector uh, I've got the controls here I can change it this way um, and I think that's probably it so 18 minutes not too bad we've gone through everything and I know I did it fast but you can jump back to different parts of the movie to uh, play um, any given one of those again okay hope that helps